Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to NJBW Purus Review. I am your co-host, Andre C. Right over here is the wonderful at profession, the crazy Princess Melball. How you doing, Melball? I am doing great, Andre. I had to take my second skin off my tattoo today so it doesn't look like it's jamming itself anymore. What the hell is this pose? What is this? The, Adjustment. The Jesse the Body Ventura. He used to do a pose like I'm doing this. a very poor bicep flex right here, but there she he, there he is. My little berry staring up at me lovingly. My very <laughs> pale arm. I mean, look at the rest of me though. He just sits there staring at me when I'm flexing. That's cute. He's a little spicy though. The uh I got a little got a little too juicy for the second skin there. It started loose, oozing out a little bit. So good times. Sure, everyone wanted uh, to hear about that. How are you juicy. doing, my friend? It's, it was too juicy. <laughs> well, I mean, it was. It was too oozy juicy. Yeet. Yeah, he was jamming everywhere. Mm hmm. He'd be jamming. How are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. Uh, ready to talk some Japanese professional wrestling. It's been uh, a hot minute since we've done this episode, too. Yeah, it's been about a month since we did because we've just been covering everything on Japanese Wrestling Update. But it's been, a, I think the last graphic I just edited was the uh, uh, the G1 Climax Final was the last time we did one of these. Mm -hmm. yeah, we're back to talk some Japanese professional wrestling. We apologize about the lack of lack of episodes this last little while. It's just been a crazy month for us. And we're finally getting mm -hmm. back into the normal as we're getting closer and closer to tournament time. Again. Again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like we get a month or so off and we're back at it again with the white vans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, it, it's nuts, man. So much it wrestling. Is, but we love it. We complain, but we love it. Oh, yeah. It's, it's all enjoyable. It's all enjoyable. So mm -hmm. we're here this week. We're going to chat some destruction in Kobe. But before you mm -hmm. do that, I want to thank each and every one of you guys. Whether you're listening to us on A-plus productions in audio form, thank you very much. If you are, if you want to hear us in audio form, A-plus productions.com. Check us out over there. And if you are watching us in the video version, whether it's Andre and Melbourne Wrestling Talk, whether it's Backburger Video, mm, 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 mm. yeah, we, we thank you so very, very much. Please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below because we want to hear from each and every one of you. Uh, don't forget to share us out, tell your friends, family, and crazy little berries that like to jam themselves. And <laughs> And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Do -do -do -do. In woo. Oh, if you oh, know, you that's know. What, that's what the berry says, yeah. In woo. So cute. Sure. <laughs> uh, the, the, the first movie was better. It was, actually. The first one definitely had a lot more adult humor in it that made it much more enjoyable. The second one was definitely like, friends are everything. Yay. It, 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 it's not wrong, but... Yeah, but like, we also would like it told in a funny, foul-mouthed way that it was in the first one. Yeah. It was to the... An unnecessary lovey dovey powdered sugar shoved down my throat to the second one. It was still cute though, mm. clearly, because I got a tattoo of it. Mm, powdered sugar. Considering the comment that I've usually been making about powdered sugar and where it is, I'm I'm finding it funny that you are making that. I just figured I'd go Simpsons on it all. <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. Let's get into this, man, because this was a fun show. Let's talk destruction and co bay. We kick mm -hmm. in a great show, a great poster. I thought just just simple, mm -hmm. but just because everything's in black and white, except for Naito and the the name and the date. I like. I just like that look. And the title, looks, yeah. It just looks great. I love the look of, the, sure. of that poster. So we get into mm -hmm. it. Kick it off with a six man tag match. It is the team of Tiger Mask, Tomowaki, Hanma, and Yuji Naga. Ta, love that guy. Uh, taking on Dragon Dia, 
Daya, whatever, however Mel wants me to say it. Like I, but it's how the, the company wants you to say it. And if you were listening to the commentary, which I know you were because you love Walker Stewart, he was saying Daya. Dragon Daya. <laughs> I'm gonna go I'm gonna go hella J on this shit. Uh Risa K Takuchi and Shota Umi no with another one of the longest goddamn fracking entrances. I'm so glad I watch all this on 1.5 speed. I I was actually I watched half of this show with Astrid. And uh, while well, she was still here. Yeah, and and we we walked away while the entrances were happening to ready our meal. And by the time we chatted, got our meal ready, got our drinks ready, set up where we were sitting the hell down, the entrance was still fracking going. Mm -hmm. Shouta, my guy. I get it. But like you had two guys in Taguchi and Daya coming out on skateboards. They at least had some sense of urgency. Like, chip, chop, chip, my guy, let's go. Get to the ring already. Especially for when your entrance is taking longer than the match. Yeah. I, I did appreciate Gooch trying to be hip and cool with his own skateboard. <laughs> it was just like I that. mean, look at the team he was on, though. He was definitely... The senior citizen in comparison. To oh, the very two. much so. But he's probably the youngest of the senior citizens in the match, though. That's that's the other thing. That is actually very fair. Yeah. Um, Nagata getting a great cross face on on Taguchi at one point, but you you mm -hmm. just so great at the cell, just fights to those ropes. Uh, Taguchi going for those bum rushes, as I'm going to start calling them. I call those bum oh, rushes. Oh, I wrote great. down he was throwing ass. Yeah, he was throw, he's throwing those, throwing that ass around uh, to Tiger Mask, but uh, Tiger mm -hmm. Mask keeps like blocking it and hitting Gooch in the ass every time he goes for it. It was so good. Yeah, he was either like kicking him, like mid kicking him across the butt, or like there was a couple of atomic drops he also did on him. That was just, it was so funny, just the back and forth, because he just kept throwing his ass, and Taguchi was Samoa, or I'm sorry, um, Tiger Mask was just Samoa Joeing. Mm -hmm. Gucci and just booming him in the butt hole, and it was just, it was funny. It was a really funny spot. Yeah, uh, and then he does get the somersault into into his uh, bum rush, throwing ass, whatever you want to call it. Uh, uh, it was a gorgeous tilt the world backbreaker by uh, Tiger Mask to Dragon Dia or Dia in this. It was so good. I uh, followed mm -hmm. it up with that Tiger Bomb for two. Um, was it? Uh, I think this is the graphic I pulled. Yeah. Double. <laughs> double throwing ass with Umino and uh, Gooch here. Ah, oh, so good. I love that. The Hanma. That was so good. <laughs> I mean, right sweeping the feet right out from underneath poor Hanma. Um, also, I mean, I just got to appreciate the picture that you did pick. I mean, Shota clearly throwing ass a lot better than Taguchi. Taguchi is pretty much still on the ground. He's got the he's got those old hops, and Uno's got those young hops. Because young hops, come on. I mean, Uno also working with a hip issue, though, isn't he? Yeah, but he's young, so those things just. He's fix young themselves. and silly, so he's gonna make that decision to work on the bung hip. Yeah, uh, Hanma does get a kokeshi to Uno one play, but Uno hits Hanma with the Death Rider for the win. Mm -hmm. He worked hard for that Kokeshi, too. Like, mm -hmm. Taguchi at the beginning there made him really work for it. And Umino, when they got in together, Umino kept rolling out of the way as well. Um, made me feel bad, poor little Hamna, just face planting in the middle of the rain. But, um, yeah, I, I this was bad. really fun. I didn't feel bad See, at all. I feel bad. I'll get to this point first, then. Because Hamna is such a joy and privilege to watch right now yes he's very very stiff because of that fusion that he's had in his back and neck there where he's just it doesn't appear that he actually like rotates at all from like the base of the neck to somewhere in his, the middle of his back he's very very stiff but the smile on his face and just the absolute he's the nane takahashi if you will, of NJPW, where he is just so happy. 
so 110,000% into what he's doing and he's getting the crowd into it as well. So even though, you know, we're probably not going to see him in a title kind of thing right now or ever again, um, he's still so entertaining to watch. And then to see Daya again was so nice. Um, seeing him come out with a mask, Taguchi with the skateboard. He showed Taguchi how to skateboard. Like, it was a very, very fun little entrance coming down on that big ramp. I thought Taguchi was going to yeet himself off of the ramp with the skateboard. Um, pleasantly surprised he did not. <laughs> yeah. Other than that, just Taguchi throwing ass in this was really funny. Really funny, really fun. I, I oddly enough, I kind of miss the sense of humor, the funniness of it. I, I've been missing that kind of humor. Yeah. I think uh, with the Yano kind of humor, I've kind of been like, yeah. Where Gooch is, Yano is ridiculous for ridiculous things. Where Gooch is funny in his awesomeness. Yeah, he almost like it's almost like a complimentary mimic. Mm -hmm. that he does of people and right now he really does seem to be in on naito which i am loving well just think about when he was with rocky romero the mega coaches he very took he took a lot from rocky romero mm -hmm. there and romero did take a good bit from gucci and like really got that it, his he got his goofy on working with him but like mm -hmm. you see that in that complimentary it really works together uh, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. quick update for dragon dia dude He's a champion now over in Dragon Gate. Yes, yes. He is the Open the Brave Gate champion, which is a essentially your super extra tiny junior heavyweight division over there, which is an 83 kilogram kilogram max weight, which is 183 pound max weight over there. So it's even lighter than the junior heavyweight division. Wow. Yeah. So, like, maybe if we were, well, maybe not so much. I was going to say maybe a future stardom kind of sort no, of. No, it's just, belt. It's, it's just, it's their version of the junior belt. They're, they're just weight limited. It's just lower. Oh. Yeah. Interesting. Wow. Yeah. Congratulations to Dot. Yeah. Yeah. So, we move on six man <laughs> tag team action. It's Mel's Los and Goblin no Los and Goblin Noves de Japon Bushi. In gubernables, de Los gubernables de Japón, Bushi, Hiromu Takashi, Takahashi, and Yota Suji versus my United Empire, Callum Newman, Francesco Akira, and Jeff, and your television champion, Jeff Cobb. First of all, why are they my Los Gobernables and your yeah, United you're, Empire? You're always behind LAG, and I'm always behind United Empire because I rock the. I'm always behind United Empire too. Which one of us wore an United Empire shirt out the last time? Because mine's too tight. Mine's too tight. Have, anyway, take you a order me a three X when I wear a four. Uh, I'm joking, I'm joking. It's all good. You, you, it's, it's aspirational. I know. Just like this one. You mean inspirational? Aspirational, like I'll eventually fit into them. That's aspirational. Okay. okay. Yeah. Take us into the match, man. <laughs> uh, Cobb stops a Rana by Suji and just uh, swings Suji around, just yeeting Suji, the big old mm -hmm. boy, yeeting him out of anybody. It was just crazy. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. He treated Suji like a rag doll in that moment. Yeah, that was nuts. Um, Newman and Hiromu going back and forth with the speed was awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, when we were watching this, Astra developed quite the crush. Quite the crush on Callum Newman. She fell in love. Yeah. Mel, Mel love her life. Akira. Mel, Mel, you're into Akira. She, she's into Newman. I mean, perfect, perfect I'm pair for you guys. Perfect pairing for you guys. I do miss Akira's beard, though. He's very clean-faced right now, and he looks very mature, but I do like the beard on him. Uh, uh, beautiful chops by Akira and Hiroma just working each other over, and they were both mm -hmm. just cracking each other in the chest. Uh, mm -hmm. Suji at one point gets that tilt-to-whirl arm drag to Cobb, but Cobb comes right back. Uh, hitting that hammer and sickle that, that just sl that slam and that forearm down. 
Oh, mm -hmm. right into that. I got, I got the graphic right into the standing moon salt, and I, it's the only graphic I got for this match. But... Majestic. Just, just, it's not fair. It's just not fair. It's not fair, Kevin Kelly. It's not fair. Uh, uh, the end of this match comes with the boo, the rocket, uh, to Newman, and Haruma drops a key, like gets Kira on his shoulder and drops him knee first, gets him into a standing clover leaf, then picks him up and slams him while still in the clovery and lays back into like a laying back clover leaf, and Akira is forced to tap out. Yeah, that finish was insane. Actually, I think I got that graphic. Yeah, this is when he was going to drop him on like knees first onto the mat. Yeah. Really, really targeting those knees. Akira's knees have, have been a perpetual problem for him for at least a year and a half, two years now that we've been seeing him, um, especially with Catch 2-2. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the one thing that I, I wanted to add to this and to kind of like what you said, is Kyle Newman picking up that speed. He's fast as fuck, boy. Jesus, he just gets going, 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 and then he starts doing that reversal, like where he'll instead of going across the ring, he'll hop to the side and go. Like it's just so crazy. He just almost dizzies you before going in for that kill shot, and I absolutely love it. Um, but yeah, the way he flowed with Romu was just so good, so good. I would love to personally see. Newman and Hiromu in their own kind of singles match, just a pop-off singles match, just to see what we could get out of them. Because I feel that the crowd would be very pleasantly surprised with what they could get out of, of that match, especially considering what we got out of Callum Newman in that G1. Holy hot diggity dang. Um, yeah, that's all I got on here for this one. Yeah, especially with Hiromu now, Moving into that net, that open weight division, when, like he just challenged mm -hmm. Shinara recently, so like you know he has he can step up and work these these guys. Mm -hmm. So I, I I look forward to seeing that. I really do. Same. We move on to a non-title match because the strong open weight championship is not on the line in Japan. It only defended in mm -hmm. other places in the world. So it's on Roki Goto mm -hmm. versus Gabe Kid. Uh, kid attacks Goto backstage. Like he's attacked him backstage, and his music comes. And he, the kid, comes out to Goto's music. Uh, they drags the camera back there. They fight it onto the ramp. Uh, they they're just fighting. He tries to Kingston Eddie Kingston Goto off the the ramp to the barricade on the floor. But Goto's having none of it. They and they keep fighting. They fight to the ring. They start the match. They fight right back out of the ring. They're fighting into the crowd, and we get a double count out, and the match is over. So we can move on. All right, on to the next match. No, 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 no. Rick, kid, Gabe Kid decides, no, no, he wants it restarted and as a no DQ match, which doesn't mean no countouts, but I guess in this one that means no countouts. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, they so it gets restarted. What did you think of this little tease off the top, though? Thinking, oh, I, I legit was like, oh, are we getting screwed out of this match? And this, I was thinking maybe it was going to take us to it would be his match in uh, November uh, at mm. in, Bo in, Bo in Boston. In Boston? Boston. Boston. So then we decided it was somewhere else. No, no, that's the, the next the show after that in Long Beach. Oh, OK, OK. Yeah, that's um, the strong style evolved. This one is Fighting Spirit Unleashed on November 8th in Boston. So this is something that, like, at first I was kind of like, what in the world? No way. But then I was like, it's Gabe Kid. I kind of expected Chaos to be in this match, no pun intended, with Goto. Um, when, when the countout kind of happened, I was like, well, that's disappointing. We have seen a couple of these matches kind of happen throughout the year. Luckily, I feel like enough time has kind of passed in between the last time they tried this that it was a, a workable um, kind of story and attempt. I feel that it actually added to the kind of intensity of the, the rest of the match. So I actually, at first I was annoyed. And then I was, because I really wanted to see this match. And then when I realized I was not only getting the match, but I was getting it improved, I was like, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and and you are right. It is. It's not in Boston. It's in 
Lau. Lau. I was going to say, I was going to say Lloyd, but I was like, no, that's the wrong person thing. Yeah, it's in Lau. But I, but I, I, I know Lloyd. our friend, our buddy, my, my other tag team partner, my, not quite as good ranking number the person who ranks number 10 for my favorite people in Oli behind all of the guests people all the guests we've had at number nine uh, I, I put this ranking out on saturday <laughs> during bobby and mark's show um yeah yes, he's, I remember. He, he has uh hey, you, you came in first so as i should well ashley <laughs> ashley was a close contender to take she she, she, she almost came in first but you know, i was like nah my princess mobile got a but uh mm-hmm. he's he's interested in that uh fighting spirit and unleash show he has mentioned that he's interested in going to that in, in yes. lowell well, he should lowell. yeah okay. lowell. Lowell. just it's just one l just one l to be in oh. lowell well I, I, think it's, I, think it's actually, I think it's actually called lowell massachusetts but i just uh, lowell. Lowell. Like saying lowell <laughs> It's Lowell, Lowell. Massachusetts, but I like call it Lowell. Sounds rough. Lowell. So it gets restarted. Uh, Goto's beating up on Kid through the crowd. Kid, Kid ends up whipping Goto into the post. Uh, back to ringside. Kid gets a brain buster in the ring. He pulls out a table between the apron and barricade. He tries to do a suplex onto it, but then it just falls over to the floor, and that's it for the table. No tail spot. Uh, I mean, it's okay though, because Gabe Kid and Tables, mm-hmm. they're they're they they're um, yeah. Table that's usually we, comes out better in the end yeah. of that one, which isn't saying much. Well, that's how we got how Eddie Kingston got Kingston on that on that show trying to go through a table and he broke his femur or whatever. Yeah, there's shin yeah. bone or whatever. Yeah, and I think it was his. I think it was. Yeah, I don't know. I don't want to something. say the wrong bone. Something in his leg. Um, yeah. He got uh, fucked up. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, Kick is just huge, Larry, at one point. And he falls it over the straight right into that back, that deadly backdrop suplex is for two. Mm-hmm. Uh, kid gets the table again. Um, he misses hitting Kota with a spike. But Kota hits a wheel kick and uh, gets the spike, tosses it out, and then throws the table back out of the ring. So goodbye table again. <laughs> We're not getting a table spot. It's just so dumb. <laughs> uh, kid just wanted to use this shit, but Goto was having none of it. None of it. Not even a little. Uh, kid fights back at one point. It's another backdrop. Uh, but Goto hits a beautiful lariat when Kid is going for a knee. Uh, then he hits a GT. W for two. Uh, kid goes for a small package, but it gets stopped, and he has to show take Kai, and then he follows it up with the G T R for the win. I was a little bit surprised here. I was a little bit, but not terribly much because I felt that this decision meant that a different decision was happening later in the night. Which I was right about, mm-hmm. and I was okay with it. I was okay with it, especially because of what it ends up setting up after, which I think mm. is going to be even better. So let's oh, yes. get to that right now. You want to jump all the way to that right now? I don't think you want to, because that's going to miss a lot of stuff that you probably want to talk about. Well, I have the next stuff I really want to talk about. That's for sure. I know that like, we should probably do that. All right, we'll jump to that right now. <laughs> oh, oh, so I, I got a couple gra- I got graphics for each match where they're fighting in the crowd. This is before the first disqual the first the first match disqualification. Just kids kids face here was amazing. Just ah! I mean, both their faces are kind of great because kid just looks like yeah, I'm slapping the shit out of your boobies. And Godo's just like yeah. he and looks like he's giggling a- about it. And the GTR finish right there. Beautiful, beautiful spot. Love the GTR. Mm-hmm. Simple, simple move, but effective. We move on to a six-man tag team match. It is it is just five guys. Sonata, Taichi, and Taka Michinoku taking on TMDKs. Kosei Fujita, Zack Sabre Jr., and the man 
revealed to be Elif, but the new member of TMDK. It's real hey, oh, wow, baby. Ah. Looks, looks great in orange. He does. He does. I do like that gear. You mentioned that it was the gear that he was wearing at Noah with an addition of a stripe and the TMDK mm -hmm. on the booty. I like it. I like the simplicity of TMDK in that they don't sensationalize their shit. But like, look at these three guys. They are so unified while wearing drastically different styles of gear. Yeah, Zack Sabre Jr. without knee pads in the trunks, the shin pads, then you got Kose in the baggy ones. And then you got Oiwa looking like I'm not gonna lie, he looks like a Seth Rollins version of Kaito Kiyomiya. And I'm loving it. Especially because he wrestles just like it. Take us into it, man. Yeah, again, really fun match. Um, mm -hmm. Oil, I didn't take a lot of notes on this one because I was just really enjoying it. Oil getting the best of Tai Chi really <laughs> early. Um, so now I guess a backflip into the skull end, uh, but he's reversing with uh, Saber and going to the Euro Clutch and uh, the O'Connor roll. They're trading roll ups. Uh, Sonatic does get a dragon screw at one point. Uh, Taka's in there uh, just towards the end. Taka tries to eye, poke the eyes of Saber, but he ends up grabbing the fingers, manipulating the fingers, which is like, ew. Uh, um, and he hits the Pele. Uh, Fujita hits a strike into the Oiwa backdrop suplex, which looked absolutely phenomenal. Mm -hmm. um, but Sonata breaks the pin. Team Decay clears the ring. And uh, Oiwa gets this like rear naked choke on Takuma Chinoku, just like just ragdolling him around, then follows mm -hmm. it up with a discus lariat for the win. Very, very dominant win. Very dominant win. Um, so the only things that I want to add to this is is Oiwa and Tai Chi. Okay, first of all, Tai Chi, can we talk about the attitude? He's picked up some attitude in his time off with the uh, the G1 there. And he's kind of come back a little bit moody broody. Um, we're going to have to wait and see what that means for him and his team. Because, you know, that became a popular phrase for me when we were talking about Will Ospreay there. Before his um, NJPW departure. And moody broody Ospreay typically meant championships for himself that meant that he was going to be on top i mean when he was moody broody osprey he became the belt collector so i'm having the same hope for tai chi because i really have enjoyed tai chi's wrestling over the years and i'd like to see him get that big sensationalism for the hard work that he does but sometimes so the, the attitude is good in the ring with his wrestling but it's having an odd impact on him in other places so i don't know if you noticed at the beginning here when they were derobing usually they're pretty nice to to everybody with their stuff and like giving each other their jackets and and whatever except for house of torture because because they're house of torture but like tai chi really whipped his jacket into the face of the young lion taking his jacket and I felt that that was a little off-putting for me. But then to see him go in with a Wiwa, he, you know when Tai Chi is mad and he, you could just tell he's hitting a lot harder, he's being a lot stiffer, he's being a lot rougher, he's being a lot meaner. I got the same feeling with a Wiwa. I felt like he was putting him through the ringer and he was kind of doing it like on purpose. Does that make sense? Yeah. So that being said, I felt that the match and that like the match time between Oiwa and Tai Chi was actually really, really intense. And I again, much like um Callum and Hiromu for the match before, Oiwa, even though we've seen well, we'll talk about it later in the show about what's going on with him, I would like to see him do a run with Tai Chi. I feel that it would help solidify both men in this company and, and help solidify both of their names. Um, Zach versus Sonata was actually also very good in this. Um, Sonata pretty quiet during this match. Actually, both Zach and Sonata, I felt, were pretty quiet in this match. Um, I feel like they were letting 
um, particularly Kose and Uiwa have their kind of shiny bit mm. um, and show off parts of this match. So um, I kind of felt that they, you know, Zach and, and Sonata had their fun, their little, um, you know, amazing stuff that I, we know that they're capable of doing, but they definitely kind of, I feel like they stepped aside for the young boys in this one, which I feel was appropriate. Um, especially the, okay, the last thing I want to mention, this last bit was Fujita versus Taka Michinoku. Those two turned it right the frick up in this one. Like, Taka's still good. He goes so good. But with Fujita, Fujita is, like, motivated and driven as all hell to be the best of the best. And he puts 110,000% into everything that he does. When I tell you that he chopped the ancestors out of Taka Michinoku in this match, you should know that Mushu showed up at ringside to be like, dishonor on you, dishonor on your family, dishonor on your cow. Oh, Fujita yeah. smacked the fuck out of Taka, and it was glorious. Did you do a Mulan reference? I did. Did you like it? Yes. <laughs> Had to throw oh, it. Oh, genius. Oh, genius. Post-match, though. Oliva finally gets to sit on the apron with TMDK, something he's been wanting to do since before he left for his excursion when Saber was using him as a prop. He did you see too? Zach even like grabbed him by the freaking waist and put him up there. It, it's the most yep. iconic thing for someone of TMDK. I don't mm -hmm. think he could do that to big teats, but I'd love to see him try. I think he'd have to like muscle teats up on his shoulder and like just like <laughs> like heave him onto the apron. He was gonna like pop him up. <laughs> No, and I feel like just because he would be a dick, that Teat was one that like totally ragged all him too. Oh, hundred percent, a hundred percent. Oh, we move on to the uh, never open weight six man tag team title match. It is Hiroshi Tanahashi, Bolt No Leg, and Toriano defending uh, their championships against House of Torture, Evil Show, yeah. and Yujiro Shakahashi with the little dick. Uh, and the okay. torturous ones attack before the bell, as usual. Um, Togo hits Yano in the back with the corner pad when he's running the ropes. Uh, they fight out to the floor. Uh, Evil runs Yano into a barricade, taking out Abe-san, as he does in every match. So, yeah. Why, Abe-san? Why? Uh, Bolton and Sho are in the ring. Bolton sends Sho flying, and they start call and then the announcers just calling him the Kazakh Wrecking House. I, like, I mean, oh, I like it. I'm like, I like it. I very much like that. Mm -hmm. Especially right. against Show. Show is also like really a bushy level kind of over animation and selling. Mm. So, like, having him back and having like even Bolton just like shoulder tackling him, it was like shoulder tackle 10,000. It was crazy. Yeah. Uh, he ends up taking out all of House Torture, slams show, and hits that flying body sausage. He then follows it up with a bolt and shake to show. Mm -hmm. uh, later in the match, uh, Tana gets a somersault sent on. Um, I can't remember on to which member, but he, he hits the somersault sent on. Uh, Tana ends up getting run into the exposed corner. House Torture triple table. Uh, they go for the dick to dick contact, but it is stopped. And we get the rarest of rare, the ace to dick contact. And then follows it up. Tana. Didn't we call it something different? I don't Presidente know. Presidente to Pola. Pola? Uh, no, that's chicken. Pre Presidente to Pola contact. I'm just going to call it the Presidente to Pola contact. <laughs> Presidente to PP. Presidente to pull contact. Uh, Tana then starts hitting everybody with dragon screws, twists and shouts. It's a sling blade to you, Drew. Uh, Narita, Narita gets involved. He hits Tana up top when he's with as a push up bar. House of Torture about to take out Tanahashi and a blonde. Blonde dude shows up. I was like, who the hell is this dude? It's El Phantasmo, a short haired, blonde looking El Phantasmo, which confused the living piss out of me. I thought it was Zack Sabre Jr. at first, and then it's like, wait, that's not Zack Sabre Jr., it's ELP. Takes out we House had of this Torture. discussion on Japanese Wrestling Update where you thought 
that he looked like Zack Sabre Jr. I thought he looked like a scrawny Joe Hendry. Yeah. We we believe in ELP. There we go. <laughs> um, so uh, he ends up hitting Yujiro with the CR2. And Tana hits Yujiro with the high, the fly, and the flow for the win. This wasn't as torturous as I expected it. No. Like because whoever... they negated they negated most of the torture the torturing they, yeah. yeah it like there was torture attempts made but because they were thwarted it made the match that much more enjoyable it's when the shenanigans work too much because there were shenanigans and they worked it's when they work too much in house of torture matches that they become something just not happy and nice to see. So I actually enjoyed this match a lot more than I expected. I actually also went into it with very low expectations just because of the presence of House of Torture. Um, But I was actually very, very pleased with how this went. And it actually was able to maintain my attention for the entire thing. Usually once the shenanigans start, I check out. I can't keep intently watching it because i'll just get angry um but yeah this was actually a lot of fun to watch and i was actually really really happy with how it, it ended and kind of wound down my also biggest, with the my addition of hendry though, as I say, my biggest question to the shenanigans what did astrid mm-hmm. think about the shenanigans uh we didn't get to this match oh uh, okay okay we fell asleep <laughs> okay <laughs> I just figured I'd ask. Otherwise, she would have had opinions on on the ELP Hendry as well. She would have, yeah. She would have, yes. (laughs) So, uh, post-match, I'm pretty sure Jada was already part of Hauntai from when he was with G.O.D. and that whole, they were were Hauntai adjacent or whatever at that point. (laughs) But ELP is welcomed into... Hantai after the match because there was a whole thing where he wasn't sure where what what is where his loyalties lied for the longest time. And else torture was trying to bring him in. But my biggest thing with watching this whole thing, Jado is the has the biggest arms in that ring. I thought the same thing. This is why I've always called him Jackdo and not Jotto, because he's jacked. Look at Mm -hmm. that guy. But, I mean, EMP is very, very defined as well, but he's definitely, like, calisthenics cut. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's very lean. Uh, Jackdo is lifting all of the weight. Well, I was... So I listened to another wrestling podcast and they were doing a review of Sakura Genesis from 2017. And so I went back and watched the show before I listened to the review and Jado and Gato are tagging on that show for the going after the junior tag titles against Taichi and Yoshinobu Kanemaru. That's how far back that was seven years ago. Yes. So in 2017. Yeah. Oh my God. And wow. Jado is a, 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 Shell of what he looks like now, and at that point, I think he was forty nine, and he was like scrawny compared to what he is now. Wow! Look at Jado over here. Mm-hmm. Right? Because, right. like you said, he was forty nine when he was doing that. Yeah, that's how years many years ago. But he's fifty. Oh my god! Now. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, it's better it, it, than most 20 year olds we know. Like he like and, and not to say he wasn't like he was in shape then. Like he had he was in he was in pretty incredible shape back then, but he is not jacked though at that point, right? Yeah, no. he's 50, yeah, he's 56 right now, and now he looks like that. It's crazy. holy shit. Yeah, literally wow. I, I, I literally went to his Wikipedia and the picture they have is from Jado in 2017. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> That's too funny. Oh, Jackdo. Yeah. Oh, Jack You're an inspiration, sir. We move over to the Junior Heavyweight t- Championship match. I'm supposed to tag, t- ch- tag, tag again. I always want to say Junior Heavyweight Tag match. It's because we want the War Dogs. We do. Hashtag, well, we, get... we want War Dogs. Hashtag, we want war. King of Pro Wrestling, baby. 
Um, <laughs> so we kick it off. It's Doki defending against Yoshinobu Kanemaru, uh, the teacher and the student, the Suzuki Gun brethren. Yeah. So they, I would say like, yeah. he was a, they did say on commentary that that Kanemaru was a mentor to Doki when they were in Suzuki Gun together. Which mm -hmm. does doesn't surprise me even in the slightest. Um, no, well, because like Doki kind of came in to replace Desperado, when Desperado broke his jaw. Mm -hmm. So that doesn't surprise me that that Kanemaru and him were were kind of, you know, more paired up together. Also, because they were the only two juniors in that faction. Because at that point, Taka wasn't around very much. He was busy running Michinoku Pro. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, this match kicks off. Kanemaru goes after the knee. They fight until uh, Doki fights back. They fight, take it to the floor. Uh, Doki hits a baseball slide. He starts running him in the barricade, but Kanemaru catches him. What? 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 My ADHD brain heard "Take it to the floor," and then it just started singing an LMFAO song in my head. Oh, all I can think now is Justin Timberlake. That one take it to the bridge, dirty babe. Se sexy bag. Yeah, that's all I can think now. <laughs> take it to the bridge. That's all I can think now. Uh, get gets, I always gets... thought they were saying take it to the fridge. No, oh, that's my motto. Come on. I mean, I'm a weed take smoker, it so it's mine too. Eat the food. <laughs> Yes, I'm going to gonna eat the food. Take the We're going to get some snicker dudes. <laughs> so Katamaru gets a hold yeah. of uh, of Doki, and he ends up picking him and dropping him knees first onto the floor, which looked pretty mm -hmm. gosh darn rough. Uh, yeah, that knee the... drop. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, so Katamaru working over the knees for the next little bit. Uh, Doki ducks uh, Kanemaru uh, and he ends up uh, ducks Kanemaru and Kanemaru just like dives to the ropes at one point. It was great uh, to the floor. And Doki hits the plancha then follows it up with an acai moonsault. Um, so good. He goes for Doki Choki, but he gets reversed <laughs> into a jackknife cover by Kanemaru. Look at, I, I really <laughs> like that. It was really kind of inventive to see him reverse the Doki Choki like that, man. Which is funny because I always think that's the simplest and most simplistic way to get out of the Doki Choki if you're trying to struggle for it. But it seems that no one has really thought about it until now. Yep. Um, Doki uh, catches Kanemaru uh, trying to go over top of him in the corner. Gets him into the gory special and hits a widow's peak for, for Christ's sake. Uh, then he... Uh, and he's... Uh, Transitions, like I almost said reverses, transitions into Mel's favorite move. The Doki Choki. There you go. The Doki Choki. The Doki Choki. The Doki But let, let, real quick while we're talking about Jack, though, I mean, look at Ken Waro's arms. Oh, yeah. Oh, dude's getting incredible shape. Right? Arguably the best shape that I've seen him in throughout my personal viewership of NJPW, which is going to be about, I would say, five, six years now. Yeah. Uh, at, at one point, show shows up to distract the ref. Uh, well, while well, Doki has him in the chokey. Um, he lets go. Kane gets a, a, a shot of his drink and hits the Santori surprise. And it's a corner, Larry, and a moonsault for two. Uh, later in the match, Katamaru gets the deep impact DDT, but only gets two. The ref gets taken out. Uh, show uh, Doki Knock show off the apron, though, taking him out. Hits a tope suitita. He comes back in to hit day break to Katamaru and gets a two count. Uh, Katamaru then follows it up with a victory roll to re reversing Doki Choki, but Doki comes back with a he or no, sorry, not. Uh, reversing suplex to La Luna with a victory roll. Um, mm -hmm. But Doki comes back with a huge lariat, hits suplex to La Luna, and he scores the victory! Yes. Yes, 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 yes. This was such a great match. The intensity and emotion, first of all, behind these two guys. 
they they were very much it was very much a very similar feel to Canemaro versus El Desperado. Oh. And it makes me kind of sad to say though, Canemaro was becoming that gatekeeper that Ishimori Tai or not Ishimori Taishi, Tomohiro Ishii um has is becoming for the super heavyweights and the heavyweights where he is the person that you have to beat to be able to progress into a longer kind of title run um and yeah that was kind of the vibes i got from kanemaru in this match um i loved how these two flowed together because you know it's kanemaru you know what he's going to do. He's going to go after your knee. He's softening it up for that figure four. But the seemingly endless list of shit that he has in his arsenal to be able to target your knee seems almost impossible to prepare for. Because once you think that you have everything, he throws something else in there to throw you completely off of your game. And this is what I love about Kanemaru is he's constantly progressing in his moveset and evolving his moveset depending on who he is facing. Um, yeah, such a great match, man. Such a great match. I actually, you, you mentioned everything that I had written down. Except okay, so the the knee drop that um Kanemaru did on the outside that looked really brutal. What I really liked is how effortlessly they kind of reversed that. It was like Kanemaru knew exactly what Doki was going to be going for, caught him on the reversal. I think he was going for a DDT. Mm -hmm. Just caught him on the reversal of that, and then just slammed him down on his knees. It was just so perfect. The timing of both these guys is just so perfectly good i love it yeah yeah i i love these two i think it's absolutely phenomenal but post match uh mm. show makes his way down like a little little prick um even littler prick than dick um he uh, steals micro yeah the micro show um he steals the junior title away and he demands a match if, if Doki wants his belt back, if Doki does agree, so Show returns the belt, but then he hits Doki in the face or in the head with the wrench. Um, and he starts beating on him, but Tai Chi and the rest of just five guys do come out, and Tai Chi chases Show away. And mm -hmm. uh, Yu Yu Mir carries Doki to the back. Well, I mean, he needed to, he got nailed in the face with a wrench. Mm -hmm. Doki is one of those people who truly and unquestionably knows how to sell his injuries. He doesn't forget where he's injured or how he's injured. And he's, he's just, he's so good. So good. I'm not going to lie, though. As good a show is in ring, I don't know how excited I am about this. Maybe it's just because I don't feel that he has done anything since his return to earn this opportunity and maybe that's why i'm kind of annoyed because like he's been gone a hot minute since he he lost the title he's been in some of these undercard matches yeah but he's kind of he's not really done anything on his own outside of the company like some others are doing or even within the company to to make me believe that he is deserving of this title shot that being said though i don't know who else we could put up in that place as an alternative so i guess this is kind of what we're gonna get um i have hope that whoever booked this show is doing the bookings and the storytelling going forward because then then my worries are going to be kind of put to rest mm -hmm. but i am a little concerned with how this feud potentially is going to go yeah we move on. Never open late championship match. It is Shinko Takagi versus Hanari in the match that I will. I can honestly say this. I will never get tired of this. Like I got tired of Sheik versus Richie Rage. Oh, I hope they never hear this because Sheiky will never let you live that down. 
you shouldn't have you shouldn't have worked the same opponent for two and a half years straight, and I wouldn't have to complain about it. Uh, this was very much a match of two meaty monsters slapping meat. Yeah. 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 Uh, just, <laughs> uh, just lots of striking in here. Hanari trying that Shingo uh, ground Cobra at one point, but can't quite get it cinched in, and Shingo gets himself to the ropes. I really like that little spot mm -hmm. there. Um, actually, Takagi going for that fake out DDT, which is called Dangerous Driver Takagi. Mm -hmm. I le just learned that today. Uh, but Hanari mm -hmm. just rises Rave back up out of it. And he go and he lifts, picks up Shingo from Rampage, but Shingo ends up cracking him with a beautiful D D T to reverse it. I I really like that spot. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it really speaks to show like how well these guys know each other. That their regular stuff that that they usually do that would damage anybody else. They know what to expect of each other. They faced each other enough that they know how to reverse it and make it into this amazing story. Love that. Yeah. So a little bit later, Hanare hits a superplex off the top, falls at it with the sliding bomber, but Hanare pops right up, bounces off the rope, and hits that flying knee to the face of Takagi. And they were worried mm -hmm. Takagi got some teeth knocked out on that one. <laughs> yeah, these guys were walloping each other, let alone hitting each other hard. It was crazy. Yeah, uh, Hanari goes for Ultima, gets Ultima applied. Shingo's fading, but he fights and he fights and he reverses into Made in Japan. That was a great mm -hmm. sequence, just a reversal there. We jump mm -hmm. towards the end of the match. Huge strikes by Hanare uh, to a day Shingo, but Shingo ducks into it and hits a dragon suplex. They trade more strikes, more lariat, and they both lariats, and they both go down. They start headbutting each other again for like the fifth time in this match. And I'm like, how do you not? I, I literally just watched the Shibata match where he hematoma himself, and I just like, oh god, don't do this, don't do this, like ah. Yeah, well, it wasn't even just like the Shibata thing. I mean, think about it more recently, Hanare and Mikey Nichols. Oh. In the New Japan Cup. So, like, yeah. I don't, I don't like it. I don't mind when Hanari throws a headbutt to, like, the chest. Because you're you're hitting a softer part. Like, it's not that's not mm -hmm. skull on skull. You're If you hit the chest, it's not like you're going to give the other person brain damage. You can brain damage yourself as much as you want. But you're not risking giving <laughs> the other person brain damage. But, like, it just... When they go head-to-head, -head, I don't like it. Um... Shingo hits a beautiful northern lariat, and they both go down. Uh, the end of this match comes. Shingo stops the, the double wrist clutch pull-in headbutt thing, um, mm -hmm. and he ends up dropping Hanari with strikes, picks him up, pumping Bomber for two. He then follows it up with Last of the Dragon, crushing mm -hmm. Hanari with Last of the Dragon. And he gets the yeah. Win. That was a rough last of the dragon. Let me tell you. Mm. Oof. Yeah. Um, I have to agree with the headbutt thing. I don't. I don't like the headbutts. Mm. And yeah, I also started having the uh, the flashbacks. But um, yeah, I just kind of jumped in where I could on on this one. I don't have a, a whole ton of notes that that you didn't already have. Um. Yeah, this this was pretty much a, a big meeting men slapping meet. And as I mentioned, these guys were, you know, they wrestled each other enough that they're starting to have answers for a lot of each other's regular movesets. So I'm curious to see when and if we see these two face each other again. Um, what what kind of difference we'll we'll see? What what else can they reverse from each other? And what are they going to pull out in an attempt to not be stopped in the next one? Yeah. Well, an amazing match, and Shingo Takagi is your new never open weight champion. Mm -hmm. We move on. Semi main event of the evening Destiny falls short as David Finley takes on Yoshihashi for the global championship. This was good. Uh, out of all the championship matches, though, even comparatively to the never six man. This is my least favorite of the championship matches. 
Really? Yeah. Mm. Again, it was like really good match. I just I, I think I enjoyed the never six man more. I don't know. I just something. I I feel like they never hit that final gear for me personally. It was a really good match, but for me, there was a distinct lack of storytelling happening in this one, which is not what something I'm used to with both of these people involved. Yoshihashi, especially, excels on story because he's certainly not excelling on his wrestling. Mm. Ah, uh, I joke though. I I actually have very much enjoyed the 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 wrestling that I have been seeing out of Yoshihashi, especially over the last couple of years, because G1 Yoshihashi came in and never left. Yeah. So now we can't really call him G1 Yoshihashi anymore. It's just perpetual Yoshihashi, which I love that he's hit that stride where people can expect good things out of him. He just I don't see him being the face of a division right now. Especially um, at 42. It's not even that his age is a thing. It, it's the quality. You you got to look at someone like David Finley. You know, he Yoshihashi got out wrestled in this match. Mm -hmm. And he's, you know, we saw him get out wrestled. Oh, who was it? Was it Newman who who eliminated Yoshihashi? Yeah, we saw him get out wrestled by Callum Newman. Mm -hmm. it, it's it's not a matter of um it is a matter of skill right now. And I would like to see Yoshihashi get that singles title before the end of his career. Do I think it should be a global title? Maybe not. I actually would like to see him go after the never open weight title. I feel like that would help give him and and that title a little bit of of uh, a boost, if you will. But I mm. feel like the global title right now needs to be focused on a global stage. And I feel like David Finley can introduce that on a much easier platform than Yoshihashi. Does that make sense? Yeah. I'm gonna go through a couple highlights that I did really enjoy. There was yeah, they, sure. they, all, they end up fighting to the floor early on, um, mm -hmm. and Yoshi ends up stopping the power bomb on the stage and hits a neck breaker. Then there's like that running long distance shotgun drop kick, sending yeah. David Finley just rolling down the apron. So good. Yeah, he de he oversold the air shot on that one, and I loved it because it was just so funny. It works yeah. with the over animation of Yoshihashi. Yeah, when they did eventually get back into the ring, um, Yoshi gets this beautiful looking headhunter off the top for two. Mm -hmm. Looks really mm -hmm. smooth. Uh, a little bit later in the match, um, uh, the buckle bomb gets reversed, uh, and, and uh, Yoshashi like Rana's Finley into the exposed corner, then hits him with that crucifix bomb that he's been he's been using. Oh yeah, look, it looked really solid. Then and, and applies the worst submission I've ever seen. Um, it's essentially a double underhook, but it just, I, I've seen other people do it, but do it in different ways where they like, they'll, they'll do the double underhook, but then like put the legs around the body or something, their legs around the body to hold it in and really look like they're, they're torquing or his just looked like he was kind of holding them there in a loose full Nelson, like a loose, full, like a very loose full Nelson. I wasn't a big I'm fan sorry, of this that. was a, this was what Finley did to Yoshihashi. No, right? Yoshihashi had him in like oh, double okay. underhooks, like submission looking thing, but it just looked like a. I was gonna a say really I really... don't recall seeing Finley do that, but I saw oh. Yoshihashi do something like that, so that's my fault. Sorry. Yeah, and even fights off like Finley got the shillelagh at one point while in the submission, and Yoshihashi fight right, it off. Right, right, yeah, like, and he was kind of like tick tick tick. But he got him. He got it out of it. I was just like, he tries to go for the hammer lock uh, to into it, but Finley gets to the ropes. So we get to my favorite point in this match, and it's only because I get to say this. They're trading lariats. Yoshi hits his oh, inside out lariat, hits the brain buster, only gets two. She goes to the top. We haven't had it in years. But we get the loose explosion swanton bomb for, by Yoshihashi for two. The loose explosion returns. I spent the rest of the match giggling at that. Because you knew I was gonna, I was gonna say something, right? Mm. Well, even though the commentary, as soon as they started saying it, I'm just like, 
It's just so funny because we went through the whole thing with Chris Charlton talking about little dicks at ringside. And now we're listening to him talk about a loose explosion. It's like he has a doctorate. Uh, it's so good. <laughs> it's perfection, though. Uh, <laughs> so at the end of this match, Carver gets blocked. Uh, Finley flips into and hits his old finish, the Prima Nocta, which is that stunner. Uh, Yoshi rolls him up though, for two. Uh, Finley gets into oblivion. Uh, Finley hits a buckle bomb. Uh, Yoshihashi hits with a strike, but then Finley hits a rolling elbow and another power bomb for two. Overkill gets reversed into the karma roll for a two by Yoshihashi. Yoshi Finley then pops up, pop up power bomb, follows it up with the overkill. Oh, it, it, it's definitely overkill because he finished him with that one. And David Finley is your winner. Yeah, that, that overkill was overkill. Holy hot dang. Mm -hmm. the, the sell on that was just fracking incredible. Um, Yeah, the, okay, let me see here what I got. I've got the ramp spot with the suplex attempt and the shotgun drop kick. Oh, there was one point where um, right before that northern Irish curse that he does so nicely. Um, strength on display of David Finley in this match where he caught Yoshihashi and like managed to keep holding him in almost a tour of the islands kind of setup before going into that northern Irish curse. The strength of David Finley very much on display in this match for me. He muscled Yoshihashi around quite a bit. And as Walker and Chris Charlton both mentioned on commentary, on a bone shoulder. Because his shoulder has been a perpetual problem. We have seen it, especially in the G1. He had it heavily taped up, um, which almost kind of made it a bullseye. This match... This was the first time in some time that I've seen him without tape on that shoulder. So, tells me a few things. First of all, that the healing must be coming along really, really good on that shoulder, that he doesn't need the tape anymore for support. Because, like, as someone who's, like, seven years removed from dislocating mine, if I was in his situation, I would, there would be all of the tape on this thing. Any Anything that I need that's going to be taped up. Um, but also she talks, says a lot about the confidence of David Finley, his mental state in this. He came into this very, very confident about his win. Um, and he was very savage, I felt, in this match. Exactly what we expect kind of out of the, the War Dogs. Um, I actually really enjoyed this match. I had a good time with it. Um, I, I do kind of feel like it's place on the card. Maybe it wasn't the right place. I don't think it maybe shouldn't have been the semi-main. But I still really enjoyed it. Yeah, Goto did, because Goto was at ringside for Yoshihashi in this match. On so he came into yeah. the ring. Or on commentary. Uh, and he did come into the ring, and he stared down with David Finley afterwards. And we'll talk mm -hmm. about what comes next for that in a few minutes, and a little bit here after we talk about the main mm -hmm. event. I'll quickly go through what's coming next. But we move on. Main event of the evening. It is Tetsuyan. Melball's LIJ. Tetsuyan leader. Tetsuya Naida versus my United Empire's Great Ocon. And I'm, I'm just I'm just kidding. I'm just I mean, you want to claim it on this one. Go for it, my guy. Go for it. I mean, <laughs> you know how it ends. <laughs> well, dude, my team lost in the other match, too. So uh, IWGB World Heavyweight Championship match. Uh, both men taking forever to gear down. I loved Khan doing the like just just being just as much of a dick as Naito here. I loved that. I yeah. thought it was genius. Um, all the storytelling that was, should have been happening throughout the night happened in this one match almost entirely. Oh, yeah, like the the, the posing at each <laughs> like they're doing the poses at the same time during the match, yeah. Um, Khan's inventive like holds that he has working over the knee of Naito was great. He gets the mm -hmm. Mongolians and the uppercut that sits on Naito's head in the corner, then does then picks him up, carries him across the ring, and cut wrench suplex. Uh, I love that. Uh, Naito mm -hmm. working the cravat in this match. I love the cravat. It's just it's so 
classy. That's that classy. twisty one on the neck, right? The one where he's like, got like the arms. Yeah. 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 I, I love it. Just a classy ass move. Um, Naito at one point getting uh, has con down, starts hitting elbows to the neck, then puts him into the Koji clutch. Otherwise, in, but his version is the Blanca. But it is a Koji yeah. clutch. Mm-hmm. It, is, it is Kojima's Koji clutch. Fights my Koji is under my chair right now, chewing on my slippers. What a little jerk chewing on your slippers like that. Uh, Naito, SpongeBob. Naito gets Esperanza off the top, but then Khan catches him with a grapple fate to Okan into a jackknife uh, knee bar kind of thing. Like he went for a, look at him, jackknife pin, but Naito's shoulder was up and he like had the twisted the leg and everything. It was actually really mm-hmm. cool that he, he did it that way. Uh, Naito gets out of the knee bar, but Khan puts the knee bar on again. Naito gets fights and fights. Khan puts it into like a figure four version. Um, you know, the rolling in the center, but Naito fights and eventually gets to the ropes. Like, really good, like, desperation spot there. I really mm-hmm. like that. Um, uh, Khan pulls Naito up to the top, but then Naito's fighting him. Khan kind of falls, but so Khan shoves him off the top. He then pulls him back up, but this is where. Uh, Naito ends up running uh, Khan off the top rope. Um, goes for Destino, but it's reversed into a backbreaker into a sh- into the Sheep Killer, but that gets broken, and Naito finally does hit a Destino. He goes for another Destino, but it's reversed into a flatliner. Uh, Khan goes for the Eliminator, but it gets reversed into a half Destino. Uh, and then he goes one more time, full destino. And Knight, Tetsuya Naito is still your IWGP World Heavyweight Champion for only a few more days until it comes home to TMPK, baby. Great match. Great match. I thought these two, this might have been my match of the night just for the story. Again, the storytelling and the, just mm-hmm. the transitions they were doing, the inventive spots from both men throughout this match, it was just so well put together. Yes, yes. And this is what we have been saying, What not just us, but like multiple people since O'Conn has hit the scene. His ability to adapt to any and all opponents he has makes him one of those people that you can just put him into any match with any person and you know it's going to be a banger i mean even look at the ridiculousness of the kopw title that run that he had with um yuamura where he had to eat the entire lemon in in a match like it just he's done the most ridiculous things but then you put him in a match with the world champion and he gives you a world championship match. This man is absolutely incredible. Um, I don't have that much to add to this. I just kind of enjoyed this this match because there was so much storytelling. I didn't have a ton of time to pause it and try to write everything down. And if you're trying to write things down while it was happening, you'd miss the next thing. It was a perpetual movie. I watched this one twice because I I was started typing as I was going and I was getting so into it that I just said, ah, screw this, watched it, then rewatched it at like two times speed just to get notes down on where things were in the match. That's fair. And you would have to. And if I had more time and and less company and 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 less plans, I would have probably watched this a second time, too. I get you. But yeah, I get you. Yeah. I don't have that much to add to this. This was just a really great storytelling match. Yeah. And then post-match, uh, Zack Sabre Jr. came out to the ring, essentially just to, to officially set their match in place because mm-hmm. finally he's got his opponent, his official opponent for King of Pro mm-hmm. Wrestling. And then Shingo Takagi comes out kind of stealing Naito's spotlight here. They looked a little fishy. But then Ryohei Oyawa made his way down to the ring. And he mm-hmm. challenges, and he challenges Shingo Takagi. And Shingo Takagi says, "Well, why don't we do it?" And he, he says the, the location, but why don't we do it at King of Pro Wrestling? And it's set for King mm-hmm. of Pro Wrestling now. So, geez, it's gonna be an interesting 
some interesting stuff at King of Pro Wrestling, that's for sure. I mean, yeah. And that's the point, isn't it? Get our attention. Get some cool shit on that card. Get our attention. Um, yeah, I definitely kind of felt like um, Shingo was pulling an Effie on Tetsuya Naito, wasn't he? Yeah. Coming in and, and stealing some thunder um, from down under. <laughs> Australian reference. Uh, I'm funny. Anyway, um, I like to see this, though, to the, the first point of a WeWa challenging Shingo. I like to see this. I mentioned on Japanese Wrestling Update, um, we've seen this with Yoda Suji. We saw this with Ren Narita. We saw this with Shota Umino. We saw this with Kozei Fujita. Fujita. We've seen this with heck, even Bolton Oleg. The only difference is Bolton Oleg was one of the only ones to actually get the championship that they challenged for initially. Um, do I think that Oe was going to pick up a win over Shingo Takagi this early in the game? No, absolutely not. Do I think, though, that Shingo Takagi and Ryohei Oiwa are going to have an absolutely incredible traditional wrestling match? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. We've seen the stuff that we, Awiwa has been doing in Noah for the last year, and we've seen Takagi for the last few, and the multiple title runs that he's had with the Nevero title, with the IWGB World title, with the KOPW title. This is a championship uh, and a man of prestige. So we're going to see, I think, I'm going to go so far to say, we might see a banger comparable to something like um the heart brothers remember how owen and, and brett would get together and just show sure. off their power show off their technicality we know Uiwa has that we know shingo also has that from his matches with zack saber jr especially having to defend against him so i think we're gonna have an incredible freaking match come out of that but boy, howdy, Andre, I know you want to talk about Zack Sabre Jr. versus Tetsuya Naito. Oh, cannot wait. I think Ooh. that and we have seen this match multiple times. We've seen this match end in mm -hmm. like two minutes. Um, and we've mm -hmm. seen this match go for 30 minutes. It's it's the the incredible lengths these two have gone in, in wrestling matches together is, is incredible. And I cannot wait for this match. I'm so excited. I'm wearing my Sabre Jr. shirt right now, and I will be wearing it next. I'll be wearing this on Thanksgiving, Canadian Thanksgiving, on October 14th, as I celebrate Zack Sabre Jr. winning the world title and finally achieving his, his goal and getting to the top of New Japan Pro Wrestling. I cannot wait for that show. I'm so excited for that show. I'm going to watch that. I'm going to stay up and watch that show live. Oh, oh I'm going to celebrate as it happens oh sounds like a challenge and speaking of that show we're going to talk about it quickly here hiromu takahashi mm -hmm. versus mystico is going to open that show this is your opener as you can tell by the look on my face i'm not particularly excited about that but i will say this hiromu takahashi one of the best wrestlers junior wrestlers i've ever seen in my life mystico also, an incredible wrestler. As I, I get concerned. I also just don't like his finish. His armbar finish there, where he suddenly like oh, goes yeah. into this weird like I got a heck of 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 thing. I don't like it. Tranquilo, your ish. Yeah, but I still think it's going to be a really and they, like the fact that they're putting these two as the opener. It tells oh, God, you yeah. what, it's gonna be what incredible. the level of this card is because your next 100%. match. And the next one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The, there's seven out of the next eight matches, I was counting, are title matches. Oh. So you have your junior tag team titles, the uh. Intergalactic Jet Setters versus War Dogs. The, I, again, as much as we're not, a, I'm not, we're not huge fans of Kushida. This match is still going to be very good. It's still going to be a Ooh, really yeah, good match. Yeah, 100%. I'm just concerned. Like, did we not have any other established junior tag teams that we could throw in there? Nope. 
not with companies Catch we're working two? with anymore. Catch the only two, other team. Two? Hello. It's the only other team, though, really. We need to we need to do something about this, El Presidente. Yeah, very much. So. I, I mean, it is going to be, as you said, an incredible freaking match. It's just I feel like we've seen this a little too much over the last little while. Even EMT, even TMDK, putting Robbie and and Fujita in there, like. Oh God, yeah. Oh God, yeah. Especially Fujita. Fujita's got tooed. Yeah. So we and then talking about Thunder from Down Under. It's TMDK versus the Bullet Club Broke Army. It's Shane Hayes and Mikey Nichols defending their IWGP Tag Team Championships against Bad Luck Fale and Caveman Ugg. Oh, okay. That makes the attire make sense. Okay. Caveman <laughs> Ugg? Caveman Ugg. U-G-G. Ugg. Oh, that guy probably gets made fun of a lot, doesn't he? I don't know. He's six one two fifty. I don't know if he gets made of fun. Of but fun you of that named much. yourself after the least fashionable footwear of the last two decades, my guy. It's true. Come on now. He's not the first. Ugg I, he's not the first UG I've seen in professional wrestling, though. Oh my god, that makes it worse. So much worse. It's going to be nice to see Bad Luck Folly again, though, especially with his uh, little journey that he's been on the last little. A bit eating a lot better, drinking a little less. He's looking fantastic. Doesn't have Cozina with him anymore, though, which makes me a little bit sad. Cozina is living back in the states now. Tony Cozina used to the, the, oh, yeah. the other one with, with with him. Yeah, uh, he's. I, back I noticed I was seeing him post a little bit more on his socials. Yeah, he did say he is heading back in 2025. Uh, at some point in 2025 to go train, get back into training with people. But this year, he has been back home spending some time in the United States, just being normal again. <laughs> Doing seminars and teaching people in America, so you can't get mad at him for that. Hey, yeah. Then we have for the Never oh. Openweight Championship, we have Shingo Takagi versus Roy Oya. We, we, we just talked about this. I'm excited. I think this match is going to be yes. solid. 100%. 100%. And we get a three-way, three-way TV <laughs> title match. 15 minute time limit three way match. You have to, if you are subscribers to New Japan World and you have not watched the backstage comment, I implore you, please. You can probably also, I believe they also posted the clip on uh, the New Japan New Global Japan. Instagram. And I believe Jeff Cobb also shared it on his own Instagram and Twitter double check it just to make sure that i'm right about that but he just he is on fire with promos like just the mind of this man is just so that he needs to be iwgp world champion soon like i i love him as the tv champion but the motor mouth on jeff cobb needs to be on top of a company soon it yep. needs to. There is no one more marked of like he's got an MJF kind of attitude with that island delivery, that island guy delivery that just makes it so fracking funny. Mm -hmm. Like I could listen to him cut a promo for hours. I would probably throw something at MJF. Yeah. And then we have our first of the non-title matches in this title match streak. It is a six, the Hiroshi Tanahashi 25th anniversary six man tag match. It is Hiroshi Tanahashi, Shot Ubino, and their newest member of Hantai, ELP, taking on House of Tortures and Evil, Hijo Takahashi, and Oshinobu Kanemaru. I believe in ELP. Let's hope. I hope he still has that look when he gets there. Me too. Let's just move off that one because this is not a match I want to talk to. But we're getting this. IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship match. It is Doki versus Show. Look at that smile on Show's face. Just. I'm happy to be here, guys. All I think is. That's all I can I imagine the sound coming out of him right now. Like, 
Yeah, it's it, it the face that's being made. You know, the noise coming out of his mouth is one of the most annoying sounds on the planet. Ugh. This is gonna be I, great, though. I mean, I hope it is anyway. Imagine it's a fran like a male version of the Fran dresser <laughs> sound coming out. <laughs> that's all I imagine right there. Seven main event. It's Hiroki Goto challenging David Finley for the IWGP Global Championship. This mm -hmm. will be sick. Yes. Yeah. I, I, again, I personally enjoyed the Yoshihashi versus David Finley match. I feel like the Goto one is just going to be a step up uh, from that. Because for Goto, for, for me, Goto is always that person. Again, he's like a gatekeeper. You put him in a match because you want to have a banger match goto always always delivers um so yeah i'm very excited to see how this goes addendum also um with the announcement of historic crossover i'm a little concerned to see who he gets paired up because i would like to see him in the show again but his partner has kind of gone over to the the orange side mm -hmm. in the yellow side <clears throat> the orange side. Micah oh, was his yeah, original he, partner. <laughs> yeah, because Utami was against him. That's right. Yeah, yeah. It was the aces versus the samurais, remember? That's right. That's right. It was. And, and, and Tanahashi's Tana partner versus Goto and uh, Micah. And Tanahashi's partner isn't even in the company anymore. So it would even yeah. start to be interesting. And then your main event of the Neither evening. Neither is Zack Sabre Jr. and Julia. Yeah, it's true. She's over here. That's why he stole Godos. Speaking of the Orange, it is Zack Sabre Jr. challenging Tetsuya Naito for the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship, cashing in his G1 Climax match early. Mo three months early. As he will challenge for him because he wants to, he's going to win that title. And then six days later, walk triumphantly into England as the IWGP champion to beat down Sonata. So, I really do hope that is the case, especially given what happened last time with, uh, with what we thought was going to happen with the title. Mm. Yeah. Uh. <laughs> We can't. I'm, I'm so excited for this match. Me uh, as well. well. I am very hopeful that um, that Zack Sabre Jr. does pick up this way because as much as I love Tetsuya Naito, this run, I'm not going to lie, that I, this whole last couple of months, this year with this title has kind of been like, meh. And for me, and I'm sorry to say, a lot of it does stem from the stupid cluster of AEW kidnapping another belt mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. And it's always John Moxley. Why is it always Moxley? Why are you stealing shit all the time, sir? Well, yeah, because he kidnapped the U.S. title for a year. And then he had kidnapped the... At least with the IWGP world title, he showed up to shows. Unlike, he unlike when he was U.S. champion, he did two shows. When he was U.S. champion, I think he defended it like three or four times on AEW TV in an entire year, and that was it. And then he kind of forgot that he had it. It was like he put it in the closet until Kenta came knocking for it. And Kenta didn't which even point, get it. Yeah, and this is this was the start of my love hate relationship with Tony Khan because there was no way that. An intelligent booker would have allowed John Moxley to continue being the U.S. champion at that time, because what he, was he doing with it? Yeah, then he randomly loses it to Lance Archer in 2020, in summer of 2021, when he's had this title for over a year at this point, has barely defended it. Uh, just randomly drops it to him at the summer's at the show in the middle of August at, at strong, at the, one of the strong shows. Mm -hmm. the I think it took like, it, it changed hands a couple of more times before Kenta was able to get his hands on it finally. Mm -hmm. And then they dropped it off of him again really quickly. Like, mm -hmm. hot potato title. And now it doesn't even exist anymore. But 
the mat the thing that matters most is this match right here. That one right mm-hmm. there. It's Cyber Will. Yeah. And I believe that this would be the beginning of the ascension of New Japan Pro Wrestling because this will be someone, a champion, who's going to be outspoken about being the champion because we know Zack Sabre Jr. is going to run his mouth and I look forward to it. And that also means that we're going to have a traveling champion. So we're not just going to see it on NJPW, which we predominantly will see it on NJPW because he's tends to be loyal to his company. But we'll probably also see him pop up on AEW. We'll probably also see him pop up with Pro. We'll probably see him pop up all over the place. And I am excited for that marketing. Let's go. Yes. But we have come to the end of another episode of NJPW Poo Progress Review. You can find me on the X, that X thing, that DX X chop thingy. At that Canada guy, TikTok, Instagram, and threads, at that Canada dude. You can find me on Facebook at Andre and Melville Wrestling Talk or on our YouTube page, youtube.com slash at Andre and Melville Wrestling Talk. You can also find us in audio for A Plus Productions on Facebook or A Plus Productions.com. Go over there, check them out. We have three feeds over there A Plus Sports, A Plus Entertainment, and the one where you can find me and Melville, A Plus Wrestling. Go check it out. And also find me over on our local establishment on Twitch and YouTube. Check out our local establishment on both of those cha- of those channels. Uh, you can find me doing Marble Talks sometime this week. We don't know if it's Wednesday. We don't know if it's Friday. We don't know if it's Saturday. Well, definitely won't be Friday because I'll be I'll be at RCW. Might be Saturday. We I was don't gonna know. Say, we got plans. Yeah, we got plans for Friday. But yeah, we don't know. It just when. We'll, we're trying to do about eight, uh, ten thirty Eastern on on Wednesdays. Just give us time to watch the show and then jump on. But this past weekend we did it right before Japanese Wrestling Update. It, it'll come that to some point this week. We talk in Agatha all along episode five for M for Marvel Talk. And also a more shout out to Mike the Ref over at YouTube.com slash at Backbreaker Video where he summarizes all of our stuff. Thank you so very much, sir. And he has all his great content, uh, wrestling content, twitch.tv slash Mike the Ref for his AEW watch alongs. And he games there multiple, multiple days a week. Uh, then you can see replays of the gaming content, youtube.com slash at backbreaker underscore gaming. Where you find content from him, Mr. PJC. This, this weird guy right here, Wick Tools, Wick Tools. And their frequent guest. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. Kayla J. We love Kayla J. Care. Where can they find you, Melba? If you're wanting to follow a Melba, you can find her on the X thing at Collins Melba. You can find her on everything else Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Mastodon, and Blue Sky at Mel Ball Collins. You can also find me on our local establishments programming, Japanese Wrestling Update with this guy every Friday at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Unless it's not. And then we'll let you know on social media this week is going to be a pre-recorded episode because as andre mentioned we will be attending the rcw thanksgiving thunder show hey i remembered um at uh rcw Legion or norwood legion where we are going to be seeing the love of my life mitch clark Like yeah. yeah, we did it. <laughs> Taking on Jack, Pride, well, just Pride. I think Jack's dead, or at least locked in a room somewhere in his brain. Um, but yeah, <laughs> we're gonna be there. So it'll be a pre-recorded episode at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. So tune in to see all the latest and greatest in Japanese news there. You can also find me on Astro Preserves YouTube channel where we do our show, Ladies Wrestling Showcase. I miss it's so you quiet outside. without her here. I know. It's so quiet without her here. Hmm. We have an episode hopefully coming out soon. Once I get back from my little week trip here in Camor, we have some stuff that we need to talk about. I just having a bad blood. So stay tuned to our socials to see when that will be coming out. I, I did tell wanting... you to kidnap that bastard and put it in your basement. I really did. 
But why would I need the day? I don't want the jail time. I don't know. I just said figured you do it. I, I, well, there, there are some illegal things that I'll do, but I won't do that. Um, if you're wanting to watch New Japan Wrestling, we will leave a link in the description box below. It is NGPWWorld.com. It is 900, no, it's more. It's, it's 1400 yen, 1200 yen. Oh, I don't know. It co- it costs me fourteen fifty every month. Every month now, fourteen fifty or ten Canadian. Sean O'Shawn Spears. It's not ten Canadian. It's fourteen fifty. But still, an amazing price to watch some amazing professional wrestling. Sorry, I forgot. If you, <laughs> that's okay because you always throw me off track, and now I. I... If you're wanting a taste of what you can get with a subscription to NewJapanWorld.com, you can check out their New Japan TV title matches that are all absolutely free. So you can check out the uh, title reign of Zack Sabre Jr. You can check out the title run of Jeff Cobb. And then you can subscribe and go and check out that backstage promo that Jeff Cobb put, put out against Suji and Ren Narita, it involves math. You will appreciate. That's all I'm going to say on it. And it's better okay. than Steiner math, too. It is far better than Steiner math because it came with doodles, came with a whiteboard, came with a description, came with math help and a tutor in Jeff Akaba. Anyway, Andre, my trusted friend and colleague, you have anything else to say to the beautiful people? Just want to say thank you all so very much for joining us here. Uh, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment down below. Please share as well to all your friends, family, and uh, just people. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be alerted every time we drop a new video. Ding dong. Tiddly hoo. Tiddly hoo. Hi. Tiddly hoo. Tiddly hoo. Elliot thing? That she always used to do in her music. Do you remember? I was never a fan. Holly who? I think it was Holly who? Holly who? Anyway, if you know, leave us a comment. Down below. <laughs> and that being said, I am your Malva. Oh, for there is a Dre. We will see you next time. Adios.